Welcome back to Nutrition Tier List, a series where I break down all the options in a given food group and rank them based on how nutritious they are and how good they are for your health. And today I'm finally getting around to grains. You know them, you love them, you might not love them, in fact you might not actually even know them, but that's why we're here. The truth of the matter is that grains have been a fundamental part of a human diet for millennia, probably the most reliable source of just calories. Now the variety of foods most of us have access to today gives us more options for raw caloric intake, plus maybe a little something extra on the side in terms of macronutrient breakdown and micronutrient benefits. So the question becomes, do grains hold up? Do they stand the test of time against newly accessible foods? The food pyramid sure seems to think so, but we don't talk about the food pyramid, at least not yet. But on top of that, the other question that I'm most interested in answering is how do these grains stack up against each other nutritionally? Do they actually have more to offer than what everybody associates them with, just carbohydrates? Well, in short, yes. While all of the items on this list are mostly composed of carbohydrates, whole grains can also consistently be relied upon to provide a solid amount of protein, micros like B vitamins, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, selenium, and zinc, and a special kind of carbohydrate that your body doesn't actually digest. You may have heard of it. It's called fiber. Pretty much every whole grain on this list is a solid source of these nutrients, so I'm only going to be bringing them up when there's something special relating to them. Now you may have noticed that I said whole grains, and that's because that's all I'm going to be covering on this particular list. The grains in their base, unrefined forms, with one exception that I'll bring up later. Diving into the many ways that grains are altered into the products you see on the shelves can get quite complicated, though if there is interest in that, I'd be down to cover that topic in a future video. Anyway, looking at the tiers for this video, we're going to be comparing the nutritional content and benefits of each food against any shortcomings or health concerns that they may have. Keep in mind that these lists are ranked independent of each other, so an A-tier grain may not line up with an A-tier meat or an A-tier vegetable. All numerical nutritional information on this list and across this series will be based on 100 grams of the individual food, for the sake of consistency and ease of comparison. All the numbers on this list will also be for grains in their raw state, again before being altered. Now there's a couple other things that I want to talk about before getting into the list proper. The first is gluten. Now gluten and gluten-free products get a lot of attention and I feel like it's somewhat warranted. What is gluten? Gluten is nothing more than a type of protein found in grains. It's not inherently bad for you, at least not for the majority of the population. However, in some people, it can trigger a severe autoimmune response called celiac disease, which will cause some pretty serious damage to your small intestine. Those with celiac disease should completely avoid gluten in their diet, so I'll be displaying which of these grains are gluten-free and which ones are not. The other thing I wanted to bring up is something called the glycemic index. To put it as simply as possible, this is a scale that ranks foods based on their relative effect on blood sugar levels. Due to the high carbohydrate nature of grains, I felt that it was relevant to show this as well. And now, with all that being said, it's time to get into the list. First up, we've got amaranth. Now amaranth is what's called a pseudograin, as it's technically a seed, it's just that it has a very similar nutritional profile to grains. Amaranth is among the higher caloried items on this list, with one of the better micronutrient profiles. It's among the fattiest foods on this list, with a solid protein content that's notably considered a complete protein due to containing sufficient amounts of all essential amino acids. Gram for gram, it's the best source on this list of magnesium, which is used to regulate muscle and nerve function and make protein, bone, and DNA, and among the best sources of phosphorus, iron, vitamin B6, and calcium. It's especially high in phenolic compounds like gallic acid and vanillic acid, antioxidants that help protect against chronic diseases like heart disease and cancer and are shown to have liver protective benefits. Amaranth is also shown to combat chronic inflammation often associated with certain autoimmune diseases. It does contain some anti-nutrients, notably tannins, phytic acid, and oxalates, however soaking and cooking is shown to reduce its anti-nutrient concentration. In doing so, you also lose some antioxidants as well, though this is a necessary evil as it's not recommended to eat amaranth raw. Overall, amaranth is a very solid choice to fulfill your grain requirement, and we'll be starting off this list in the top tier. Hold barley is an average calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. While it's among the best sources of vitamin B1, the real standout feature in barley is its fiber content, which is shown to have a strong effect on maintaining blood sugar levels and insulin sensitivity, improve bowel health by improving symptoms of bowel inflammation, and promote good bacteria found in the digestive tract, as much of the fiber in barley helps fuel this gut bacteria. And the high amounts of soluble fiber is shown to lower LDL levels. Barley is also among the highest in resistant starch, which also boosts overall gut health and has a notably lower glycemic index than most grains. 
Overall, a very solid grain due to its unique gut health benefits. I'm going to put barley in the A tier. Buckwheat is not related to wheat in the slightest. In fact, it's not even a grain. Instead, it's an average calorie pseudo-grain with a slightly below average micronutrient content. Buckwheat is considered to be a complete protein containing a significant amount of all nine essential amino acids. Gram for gram, it's the best source on this list of copper, which helps make red blood cells and maintains nervous and immune health, while also being among the best sources of magnesium, vitamin B3, and vitamin B2. It's shown to have the highest antioxidant activity of any grain, including rutin, which reduces inflammation and blood pressure, and quercetin, which reduces the risk of chronic diseases. Buckwheat is also one of the best sources in the world of D-chiroinositol, a soluble carbohydrate that has a particularly strong effect on blood sugar and diabetes management. All in all, buckwheat is one of the most impressive foods on this list, earning it a spot in the top tier. Bulgur is an average calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. It's one of the highest in fiber on this list, and most of its notable benefits come from that, like maintaining blood sugar levels and insulin, promoting overall gut health by feeding gut bacteria, and maintaining digestive health and cholesterol levels. Bulgur is a solid grain that's going to give you everything you'd expect, plus a little more. It's going to be going in the A tier. Dried corn is the highest caloried item on this list, with an average micronutrient profile. Corn is a unique grain as it's the highest in fat and fiber on this list, and per gram the best source on this list of vitamin B6, which is needed for brain development and nervous and immune health, and potassium, which helps maintain normal cellular fluid levels. Corn contains a variety of antioxidants like ferulic acid and lutein and zeaxanthin, and its high amount of fiber is generally good for gut bacteria and maintaining digestion, blood sugar, and insulin levels. This all being said, corn does contain a good amount of sugar, about 21 grams per per 100 grams. However, this is not quite as much of a concern as they are natural sugars that digest slower and over time. It also contains a notable amount of phytic acid, an anti-nutrient that impairs absorption in certain minerals like iron and zinc. However, cooking is shown to reduce this. Corn's nutrient profile is unmatched on this list, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think it's just slipped into the top tier. Einkorn is an average calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. It's easily the highest in protein on this list and the best source on this list of iron, which is needed for hemoglobin, which carries oxygen throughout the body, and vitamin B2, which is needed for growth and red blood cell production, while being among the best sources of phosphorus and vitamin B6. It's a good source of antioxidants, notably phenolic compounds, vitamin E, and lutein and zeaxanthin. With the main draws of high protein and iron being very important, I feel that iron corn belongs in the top tier. Faro is a higher calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources on this list of protein and selenium, and it's a good source of certain antioxidants, namely a variety of polyphenols and carotenoids. Faro overall delivers a lot of what I'd expect in a grain, and it's going to be going in the B tier. Fonio is a higher calorie grain with a lesser than average micronutrient concentration. It's among the best sources on this list of copper, and uniquely among grains contains a higher amount of methionine and cysteine. Fonio is also shown to have a stronger effect on combating diseases like type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and certain cancers. Another solid grain with some unique qualities, I'm going to put Fonio in the B tier. Frike is an average calorie grain with one of the best micronutrient profiles on this list. It's the best source on this list of phosphorus, which is needed for tissue repair and the production of DNA and RNA, vitamin B3, which is used to turn food into energy and maintains nervous, digestive, and skin health, and vitamin B5, which breaks down food into energy and helps make red blood cells, while also being among the best sources of selenium, zinc, and vitamin B6. Overall, a very nutrient-dense grain, Frike is going to be going in the A tier. Coruscant is a lower calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of protein per gram and among the highest in vitamin B1, selenium, and zinc and it is shown to have a particularly strong effect on reducing blood pressure and LDL levels. It is higher in sugar than most grains at about 8 grams per 100 grams, but overall, Coruscant is a very nutritious grain deserving to be in the A tier. Millet is a higher calorie pseudo-grain with a lesser micronutrient content. It's among the best sources on this list of copper and is rich in phenolic compounds, namely ferulic acid and certain carotenoids, which have antioxidant, anti-inflammatory, and wound healing effects. And it is shown to have a strong effect on insulin resistance. Millet does contain a higher amount of the anti-nutrient phytic acid, but this is helped by soaking and cooking. Overall, millet is a really solid alternative to grains that I'm going to put in the B tier. 
Oats are a higher calorie grain with one of the best micronutrient profiles on this list. It's one of the highest in protein on this list and is the best source of vitamin B1, which helps convert carbs into energy while also being among the best sources of manganese. Oats uniquely contain avanenthromides, powerful antioxidants that reduce inflammation and regulate blood pressure. Oats are among the highest in resistant starch and have been shown to have strong benefits for immune health. They do contain a notable amount of phytic acid, but overall, oats live up to the hype built around them and they've earned themselves a top-tier placement. Quinoa is an average calorie pseudo-grain with a pretty average micronutrient profile. It is considered to be a complete protein and is among the highest in fat on this list and the best source of vitamin E, a powerful antioxidant, while being among the best sources of folate and magnesium. Quinoa contains a solid amount of antioxidants, notably quercetin and camphorol, both of which are shown to have strong protective benefits against chronic diseases. Quinoa is also very high in resistant starch, but does contain varying amounts of phytic acid and oxalates. Overall, quinoa is a solid choice that I'm going to put in the A tier. Brown rice is an average calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. Brown rice is defined by containing the bran, germ, and endosperm, thus providing all the nutrient value rice has to offer. It's among the best sources of manganese and among the highest in resistant starch. Brown rice contains a variety of flavanols and is shown to have a stronger effect on boosting heart health than most grains. It's also shown to be one of the better grains for diabetes with a strong insulin boosting effect. Now brown rice does contain a notable amount of phytic acid, but all things considered, rice in its more complete form is a net positive that I feel best belongs in the B tier. Though despite me ranking it below some others, this is probably my go-to choice for its versatility and ease of preparation. Now white rice is an interesting conundrum, first off because it's the only food on this list that we're analyzing already somewhat processed. This is because white rice only contains the endosperm, not the bran and germ of the grain. This results in enriched white rice being an average calorie grain with the lowest micronutrient content on this list. The majority of white rice you'll find these days is boosted with certain nutrients like B vitamins, folate, potassium, and iron, meaning it actually turns out to have a pretty unique and respectable micronutrient profile, being the highest on this list in folate, which helps form DNA and RNA and is involved in protein metabolism. And while it is lower in anti-nutrients, it also has a higher glycemic index than all the other grains and pseudo-grains on this list. And it is shown to have a higher risk of contributing to diabetes when compared to all the whole grains. White rice is still the worst choice on this list and is really only saved by its enrichment. It's going to be going in the D tier strictly because it's not the worst thing in the world. Rye is a lower calorie grain with a solid micronutrition profile. It's among the highest in protein and fiber on this list, with the fiber providing solid benefits like maintaining blood sugar levels and feeding gut bacteria, while together they contribute to feelings of fullness. Rye is also shown to have a stronger LDL lowering effect than most grains. While it does contain a higher amount of phytic acid than most grains, cooking somewhat offsets this and I believe that rye is a solid top tier grain. Sorghum is an average calorie grain with a lower than average micronutrient concentration. It's among the best sources on this list of vitamin B6 and vitamin B5, and it is higher in antioxidants, namely flavonoids and phenolic compounds, as well as having a good amount of resistant starch. Overall, a less common but solid choice, sorghum is going to be going in the B tier. Spelt is a lower calorie grain with a solid micronutrient content. It's among the highest on this list in protein and vitamin B3. Spelt seems to have a stronger effect on digestive maintenance and blood sugar levels, though it does have a higher amount of sugar itself, at about 7 grams per 100 grams. Spelt also contains a fair amount of lectins and phytic acid, anti-nutrients that can impair mineral absorption. But overall, spelt is a nutritious grain that I'm going to put in the A tier. Teff is an average calorie grain with the highest overall micronutrient concentration on this list. It's easily the highest on this list in manganese, which helps form bones, connective tissue, and DNA, while also being among the best sources of magnesium, iron, copper, and calcium. It's higher in lysine than most grains, an essential amino acid needed for the production of certain hormones and enzymes. Teff also has a notably lower glycemic index than most grains. While it does contain a fair amount of phytic acid, Teff's nutrient capacity cannot be denied and it will be joining the A tier. Triticale is a lower calorie grain with an average micronutrient profile. It's higher in fiber than most grains, and most of its notable health benefits come from that, like digestive regulation, maintenance of blood sugar levels, and promotion of good gut bacteria. This all being said, it's not a slouch macro or micronutritionally. Triticale is an all-around good grain that I feel has earned a spot in the A tier. And then there's wheat. 
easily the most widely used and most diverse grain there is. Calorically, the different variations generally stay on the lower end when compared to other grains, while micronutritionally, they're all in the upper end. And I know this seems like a lot, so let me break it down a little bit. There are six main types of wheat used in everyday cooking. Durham, which is mainly used in pastas, Hard red spring, which is often used in pastries, croissants, and other foods that require elasticity like pizza dough. Hard red winter, which seems to be the go-to for whole wheat and whole grain products and all-purpose flour. Hard white, which is used for tortillas, pan breads, and noodles. Soft red winter, which is used for cookies, cakes, and crackers. And soft white, which is also used for cakes and pastries. Overall, nutritionally, the six main variations are pretty similar with a few notable outliers in terms of nutrient quantity. All variations are consistently a good source of selenium, an antioxidant that's used to make DNA. And they're a solid source of fiber, benefiting digestive maintenance, blood sugar, and healthy gut bacteria. Besides that, they're all fairly similar with a few exceptions being hard red spring being among the highest in protein on this list, as well as vitamin B1, durum being one of the best sources of vitamin B3, and hard red spring and winter, hard white, and soft red winter being higher in their manganese content. All wheat variations are above average in certain antioxidants like phenolic compounds, tocopherols, and lignans. Though I should reiterate that all of this is exclusive to whole grain wheat. Once it's refined, most of this goes right out the window. Overall, wheat is a consistently nutritious grain, providing everything I would expect in a whole grain, which is good considering about three quarters of grain products come from wheat. I feel all in all, it's earned itself a spot in the top tier. And last on this list is wild rice, which by the way is not related to rice. At all. Anyway, wild rice is an average calorie pseudo-grain with a less than average micronutrient profile. It's among the best sources of protein on this list per gram and is considered to be a complete protein. Wild rice is the best source on this list of zinc, which plays key roles in DNA creation and immune health, and among the best sources of vitamin B3. It does seem to have a stronger effect on boosting heart health than most grains, and wild rice is overall a very solid choice, wrapping up this list as one of the best in the B tier. And now with all the rankings out of the way, it's time for me to kind of nail home the most important point. Whole grains are whole grains, and with the exception of gluten intolerances, they're all going to treat you more or less the same. It matters a lot less which type of grain you pick, and a lot more how processed said grain is, as the more altered these grains are, the more arbitrary all of this gets. I think if nothing else, this has proven that grains, in their fully realized state, are very nutritious being the best source of fiber and several other nutrients essential for optimal development. Are they good for you? I would say yes. Are they necessary? I would say no. Are they worth it? I'm not going to answer that one for you. Grains are probably the food group that has taken the biggest hit in terms of negative human involvement, and it makes a lot of products that are cheap and accessible rather questionable. I would like to make a video or two in the future going over the different ways grain products are processed, but I also realize just how ridiculously complicated that can get. If it is something y'all would be interested in, I would probably need some help on how to organize it. Until then, just double check what you're putting in your mouth. Now, if you enjoyed the video, or at the very least learned a little something, I encourage you to subscribe because there's plenty more of these on the way. Go ahead and leave down in the comments what food group you'd like me to cover next, and then any suggestions for how to potentially make a video going over more processed forms of grains. And remember that all I ask is that you advocate for your own body. After all, you only get the one.